What is up, YouTube? My name is Alex. Welcome back to the Lifting Nomad. We are back in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I just did some grocery shopping. So I get a lot of questions and a lot of things online. I see you know, people trying to understand how do I buy groceries? How do I eat healthy? How do I stay in shape while traveling? Well, I've got my grocery haul here for mm, the next week or so, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, and I want to walk through what I bought, how I figured it out, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's the plan for today. So without further ado, let's get into the video. back in my Airbnb kitchen. I just got back from the grocery store, so I did want to do this before everything thaws out and I'm uh, left with melted food. This, uh, one of the main reasons I love traveling and staying in South America specifically is obviously the cost is so much lower, especially in Argentina where honestly the, the economy is pretty well fucked uh, versus the US dollar. So you can go to like cash exchanges and get basically double the official rate. It's called like the blue dollar or the blue market. And your dollar goes essentially twice as far here as it normally would from like a banco or just using like your credit card. They have addressed that now and added a foreign credit card rate for Visa and MasterCard. MX still isn't working just as of yet. But long story short, this costs a lot less than it normally would. So all of this in was just under 10,000 pesos, which if you do the conversion for the blue dollar ends up being like under $30 or right around that um, for all of this food. So when I go grocery shopping here, I tend to shop very similarly to how I would at home. That's the main goal. I have a full access to a kitchen. The oven, I don't really like using the ovens down here because, uh, how do I explain this? Well, basically the ovens down in South America, a lot of times you have to use a sparker to light them. So you'd be like basically opening up the gas tank, letting the gas flow out, lighting the oven, and then trying to control the temperature. So for me, that's a little sus, and I don't really feel like blowing up my apartment. So I usually just stick with the stove top. It is still the same process, but it just feels a little bit more controlled because you actually have like the on, like the on and off just seems a little bit more easy to figure out. But anyway, so for all this food, I eat very, very similarly at, at home. So we'll go from like cold to, I guess, like shelf safe food. So you actually can get like almond milk. This is almond sin azúcar, so like almond milk without sugar down here pretty cheaply as well, which is really nice. Like I have oats every single day, so bought a vena. I actually managed to find a supplement store as well, so I did go buy protein here as, uh, down here as well. Then I make a very similar sort of breakfast as I normally would at home. So oats, almond milk, protein, usually like a little bit of salt if I'm doing like chest or uh, pull or push day. Uh, to get a bit of a more pump and then I'd really add whatever fruit in I can buy. This grocery store I went to today didn't have a lot of fruit candidly, but I still had a ton of blueberries from the last time I bought groceries. So that's like my normal breakfast meal. Oats, blueberries, uh, almond milk, sin azúcar uh, with protein. Really, really simple. I eat the exact same thing at home, you know, like 400-ish calories for a meal before the gym. It's really easy to make, shelf safe, all of that. And these like big bags of Avena, which is oats down here, are like so dirt cheap that it's really, really easy to buy. Next thing up uh, for breakfast foods, I like to mix up like my breakfast and not always have oats. So I do like bacon and eggs. So you can get like the bacon packs here, eggs. And then one other thing you'll notice when you're down in South America, uh, or even like the cheaper European countries, is that lunch meat is like crazy, crazy cheap down here. So I bought like some salami, some soft rosetta, some sliced cheese, and then some bread to make like grilled cheese sort of style sandwiches. Love doing that at home in the air fryer. Back here, it's really simple, just with like the oven stove top to put in a frying pan, make it really, really simply. Uh, and these go for like down here, you can get a pack of sliced cheese for like less than a dollar. So it goes a long way. Same with the lunch meats. They're like literally like 70 cents for a package of lunch meat. So really, really easy to make lunches that are high in protein and simple to make. So even like an idiot like me, who's not very creative with my, with my cooking can eat the same food down here. Um, I got some blue cheese as well. I think that's kind of a cool little touch to add with like the bacon and eggs, do like some blue cheese in there just to add a little bit of different flavor. Uh, they have these kind of interesting Finlandia balances down here, which are basically like, it's like Greek yogurt, but it's a little thicker and it's like super high in protein, really low in calories. So I've been eating these quite a lot mixed with like berries or protein. Uh, it has like a sort of texture between Greek yogurt and maybe like cream cheese. It's like kind of halfway between both, but it's really, really easy uh, to make like a quick snack. I also today bought some of these frozen, I've got frozen chicken burgers and frozen real burgers. So again, super, super cheap. 
And then it's a little bit confusing if you don't speak Spanish to do the, <laughs> to do the translation of how many calories is in each. But basically like, each burger is like less than 200 calories, high in protein. The chicken ones are way lower in calories. I didn't even realize that. But this, this, this burger, I think it's just actually just one in here. It's probably gonna be good as hell. I'm actually gonna put these in the freezer so they don't. Cool. Now moving on to like the shelf safe stuff. Again, I pretty much just have Avena every single day. That's oats. I'll have that for breakfast before the gym almost every single day. Uh, what I also got today was like some uh, accompaniments uh, for most of my dishes. So natural peanut butter. I'm not sure how this is going to taste actually. Uh, this is very different brand than what we'd eat back home, but you know what? Let's give her, let's give her a live test right here. I've been doing these like <laughs> on my Instagram. I've been doing like eating weird Argentinian foods. And this definitely looks a little bit more put together than the normal, than the natural peanut butter we get at home. You know those like kind of gnarly ones where you have, they're separated and you have to like mix them together. This looks like it's mostly already mixed. So let's give this a little taste test, a live taste test for YouTube. Mmm. 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 That is, that is good. That is better actually than like the craft stuff you get at home. So this is Mani King Pasta de Mani for 20, 20 grams, 117 calories. So like pretty standard to the stuff we get at home. Where is Dame Proteinas? Five and a half grams of protein, 10 grams of fat. Mm. So pretty good actually macros for that. And that's really, really tasty. And it seems to not be separated. So you can just mix it already all together. So there's that peanut butter. Now what else do I get? So I got some different bread. Uh, obviously for the burgers, I wanted to get some burger buns. So I got those. And then if you look closely when you're shopping, you can also find like white bread that's lower in calories. So this ended up being two slices for 120 calories, which is really, really low. That's like almost as low. Uh, in Canada, the lowest one we can get is Weight Watchers white bread. And I eat that like all the time back home, but it's kind of a difficult to find Weight Watchers products while, while you're abroad. So this ended up being almost the exact same calories. And this is literally just like Bimbo Blanco, like just you know, classic. I'm sure we've all met a couple Bimbo Blancos in our day. Uh, but this ended up being 120 calories, two slices, five grams of protein, 23 grams of carbs, like really low in calories and really great for just like mixing with these sliced cheeses and some meats to make like, you know, sort of grilled cheese sandwiches for lunch. Uh, and then I also got, of course, like some company malls, uh, salsa picante, uh, I don't know, this is cayenne, uh, cayenne, so like some kind of cayenne pepper, um, zero calories. It was like really liquid, so it sounds pretty good. It's probably gonna be hot as balls. Uh, light mayonnaise, you'll see down here, they come in these like squeeze packages. Uh, and then finally I got uh, obviously some, some body wash for down here. And then I, I've been doing these like random tasting things on Instagram, like I said. So I usually go through and buy like, these snacks are so cheap, they cost like 100 pesos, which is like, you know, 30 cents. Uh, but I got some, Pa palitos, sabor pancetta, so literally pancetta flavored some sort of snack here. I don't know how those are gonna taste. Uh, I got this Buffy fruit stick mellow. Like uh, it's really just a marshmallow stick, so we'll give that a whirl. And then some sort of banana dessert crunch bar. No idea, we'll figure that out. But all this food cost me less than $30 down here in South America, which is honestly incredible. And you think, you know, stuff like the catch, uh, the hot sauce, the peanut butter, the, the mayo, the body wash, that's not stuff you're gonna buy every single day. So, or even every single week, or, or even like more than once when you're down here, right? This is gonna last the whole time I'm here. So um, that's pretty much the video. Now, I, I'm not sure how useful this was, but I just wanted to kind of give you an insight into how I shop and how I eat while I'm traveling. I've managed to stay in shape pretty much the entire time I've been traveling and, and living abroad in the last few years. And this is pretty much the same food I eat everywhere I go. Uh, it does take a little bit of getting used to, of course, especially, like I said, if you don't speak the local language, it can be a pain. And my Spanish isn't great, candidly. Like, I can converse and get by, but it definitely isn't <laughs> definitely isn't fluent. So some of this, I'm, like, Google translating in the grocery store, trying to, like, calculate what it would be like back home. But as long as you can stay somewhat in line, I think people really overestimate what freewheeling your diet is going to be when you travel, right? As long as you're somewhat close to what you'd be eating at home, you're ultimately not going to gain that much weight. Like, especially if you've been training, you know, in your intermediate levels and you're lifting heavy when you're at the gym and you're doing cardio, like today, between all this shit I've done, I'm at like 26,000 steps. There's virtually no way I could be over my maintenance calories on a day like today. Even if I eat like 3000 calories, I'm going to be still under likely. Cause that's just an absurd amount of steps and cardio you're doing. 
So as long as you're, you know, staying in line and you'll notice I'm not buying any junk, right? Like I think people have a tendency of whether they're at home or traveling to buy like chocolate bars and, and chips and stuff like that. That's really high in calories and really palatable. And you can just nuke through like 1500, 2000 calories without even noticing. So when I shop, I try to just limit myself to healthy food that I would eat at home. That way you're not tempted to eat anything that's not going to be on your diet plan. So this was the whole video. Hope this was somewhat useful to see how I stay in shape while I'm traveling, while I'm abroad. This is, uh, this is it. This is going to be my plan for the next three, four months. Keep you guys in the loop of everything I'm doing, where I'm at, what I'm doing, what I'm lifting, you know, who I'm meeting, all that good stuff. So, um, that's the video. Hope this was useful. If it was, feel free to give me a like and a comment down below. What else you'd like to see while I'm in Buenos Aires? I've got another few weeks here, so we can definitely do some cool stuff. Um, but other than that, welcome back to Lifting Nomad. My name's Alex. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.